Hello, Internet, and welcome to my live reaction for Two Year Eternity, Chapter 149.75. Uh, I did not know the 149 was going to be in three pieces. Maybe you should have expected that um, after last chapter was only six pages. But anyway, when I saw that 150 was delayed to October 12th, I thought we just weren't having any chapters for like three weeks. But no, there's a third part to 149. Uh, we're only getting two weeks off. Uh, but anyway, when we last left our heroes, Fushi was sort of trying to be helpful so that no one would want to leave him, which is not exactly a healthy response to anything that has happened to him over the past several chapters. Um, but then Bond returns and tries to tell him, I think, just how much everyone cares about him by telling him of how Hiro and Tonari poisoned March because March did not want to grow, grow up without him. And how Gugu fought for to protect Fushi over those or the first part of those five hundred years, um, yeah, it seems like Bond was trying to tell him that you know everyone cares about you, but also he just casually dropped how they helped a four year old commit assisted suicide, which feels like a callback to a Fushi's kind of problems of not wanting to live on without his friends. And B, what I did not mention in last week's video, but have thought of since, a call back to the Guardian Knockers plan to, you know, kill suicidal people. Um, so anyway, I should probably say at the start, this chapter will almost certainly have discussions of suicide. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where we left off with Bond giving this kind of like faux hopeful message to Fushi, despite everything he just dropped at Fushi's feet. So yeah, we'll see how Fushi handles all this. We open with Bond kind of wrapping up his story. Chapter 149, The Path, Part 3. Currently, you feel like everyone is going to abandon you, right? But you're wrong. Everyone is working their hardest to live alongside you. Who do you think asked me to come, so, come back so fast because they were worried about you? Messar. Can you believe that? Normally, he's only kind to girls, you know. They don't dislike you enough to want to leave. In fact, I'm sure they want you to be happy. See, I just don't think this is what Fushi needs to learn from this arc. You know, this whole arc has been about Fushi having to grow up and having to deal with messy moral situations. And this, this drama in particular is more tied with the growing up and sort of having people leave you and move on and finding your own happiness beyond that. And Bond is just saying, nah, don't worry about all that. Everyone will stay with you. And I'm not quite sure that's an even vaguely healthy response for, for Fushi to kind of learn. Uh, and Fushi just asks, how many more times? Which kind of confuses Bon. How many more times can I eat with everyone? Talk with everyone? Have fun with everyone? A thousand times? Or a hundred times? How many more times will I see everyone? It's... So he's not, he's not really reacting to the March thing. And like when I reread the chapter, I was like, they don't really give the March the we killed, we killed, blah, we poisoned March, really the weight I felt it kind of deserved. But like, and so, you know, the, the main point was the whole, everyone is given their lives to like spend them with you, right? And that's more what Fushi is focusing on here. That, like, there's a limit to the amount of times he can see everyone, which is still just not a particularly healthy worldview. And Bond kind of takes that in. Oh, plenty of times. As many as you like. And Fushi counters, that's a lie. One day, the last time will definitely come. So, yeah, we're still getting back in that sort of, of theme the last several chapters have been focusing on in that, you know... As, as you get older, you sort of drift apart from people. And that's natural and it's sad, but it's not inherently bad. And Fushi can't really see that, I think. Uh, and Fushi goes on, but, but because Tonari said, everyone's going to live and die here. I, I, I know that everyone wants to make their dreams come true, not to live with me forever. And Bon actually does do... A bit of an emotionally mature bit here. Fushi. Whether it's a thousand times or a hundred times. Can't you think of that as enough? Even if it was only one more time. Um, 
And Fushi does not really agree with that. I can't take that. And then all of the uh, all of the rest of the immortal gang just pops up on the ledge above Fushi. I have no they seem like they materialize there. Like there's there's no way they were just hiding. But like Messar is already kind of crouched down there. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. Uh, Messar just pops up along with everyone. Hey now, I hear some brat throwing a tantrum. Uh, and Gugu looks at him, you okay, Fushi? And then quickly turns back. Sorry, it was time for dinner, so we came looking for you. Sounds like you're talking about something important, huh? And Tenari, Tenari kind of sighs. Yeah, let's leave him alone. I'm not quite sure this is the right response either for this issue. Uh, Bond goes over to Fushi. Fushi, why don't you tell the others how, how you feel? And Fushi tries, kind of looks away. I, I don't want to... And Tonari looks at him. Tell us, Fushi. Uh, um. And he looks back uh, to look at them all. Don't die and leave me behind. And everyone just kind of looks at him in silence as the chapter ends. Um, okay, a lot less heavy than last week. Uh... I'm not terribly comfortable with how they just kind of brushed over the whole March thing. Like, that's... That's really, really fucked up. And at this point, I don't think the narrative is ever going to loop back around to that. It remains my least favorite thing this series ever did. It's a stupid choice. And having having learned more about it, but only a little bit more about it that we actually got, I think somehow makes it worse. Like, the idea that, like, Tonari and Hiro thought they were doing this service to, to March, it's really, really fucked. I know I'm sure in, like, ancient Renril they didn't have a therapist to send her to, but that doesn't mean they should just, like, kill her because she doesn't want to grow up without Fushi. That was a bad choice. And maybe narratively, it was somewhat necessary because Fushi was always going to bring people back to the ages that he knew them. And having both Tonari and March kind of give grief, give Fushi grief for how young he made them might have been a little, like, a little bit of the same thing going on. Um, but yeah, it looks like we're not going not gonna to bring back the whole killing March thing. And I'm not quite sure that's a great choice. Um, but what we do get is Fushi still trying to... Okay, so what, what I want to bring up is the echoes of this final page, Don't Die and Leave Me Behind. The, the, the way that echoes back from Pyo Ron, Pojananda, right? How he wanted Pyo Ron to not die and leave him behind. And then Pyo Ron, because she is mortal, and specifically because she was pretty old, did exactly that. And Fushi handled that, let's say, not well. And, you know, none of these characters are close to dying in the same way Pyo Ran was. Like, the oldest of them is, like, Bon or Kai, who are both, in like, or, and Messar, who are, like, in their 30s at their oldest. The rest of them are all, like, teenagers. Uh, or, in March and, and Echo's case, like, five. Um, so, that's not an imminent fear in the way that Pioran's death was. But it's the same problem. And it goes back to kind of what I talked about last week in that Fushi never really grew from Pioran's death. He sort of pushed all those feelings to the side. He stayed on the island for like 50 years um, and then never kind of learned to deal with Pioran's passing, especially when Pioran showed up in like horse form. Um, and so I think at some point Fushi has to accept the fact that they will die. And I don't think it will be anytime soon. I think we might come back to this. You know, maybe we'll, we'll get, we'll slowly, you know, we'll wrap up, I say wrap up the Mizuha plot line. Not, not to say that it's like going to be anytime soon, but over the course of the next year or so, that storyline will finish as storylines are wont to do. And then we'll move on sometime in the future and everyone will be older. And then Fushi will kind of be back in the same place he was when Kyoran died. And he'll have to learn to, to move on. I don't know. Maybe maybe that's how the series ends, possibly. Of Fushi having to finally learn to like move on and either keep living or, in what I think might be a worse ending, become the Beholder, as I think the Beholder kind of 
you know, implied was sort of his his goal for Fushi. I don't know. Uh, but that Don't Die and Leave Me Behind definitely feels like it's meant to be a callback to Pioran's death. And I'm definitely looking at it through that lens. Um, but yeah, we see Fushi sort of, you know, he wants these times to go on forever. And that's what I've kind of been saying. The whole point is that can't happen. That's not how life works. People die... Or not even die. People like move, like Hiro says he wants to like travel the world. He wants to see the sights. You know, Gugu initially wanted to go back to Taknaha. He sort of like retracted that when he saw Fushi kind of throwing a temper tantrum. Um, but people move. They have their own lives, and you're not always a part of that. And that's I think what Fushi's going to have to learn sooner rather than later. Uh, but then also there's the guardians. The Guardians and the Knockers in the background. There's a whole bunch of stuff Fushi has to deal with. Um, and I was really hoping that March Suicide plot would tie back in with the Guardian Knockers. It felt like it was sort of primed to do that. And then Fushi completely forgot about it. When Bond tried to sell him this heartwarming, no one's going to abandon you shit. That didn't quite click for me. Uh, but the rest of the chapter, if you can ignore... March, which I don't know if you really should be ignoring March, but if you can ignore March, uh, there's still plenty of, of quality content in this chapter tying into is Fushi even capable of, or will Fushi finally learn the lesson he should have learned when Pyoran died, or will he retract just the way he did when Pyoran died? I don't know. That all remains to be seen. We've got two weeks off to sort of sit with the implications of this chapter um, so yeah, I think I'm going to leave this video off here. Hope you all enjoyed the chapter and the video itself. If you did, feel free to drop me a like or subscribe, you know, do whatever makes it happy, you know? And remember, your life is your own, okay? Bye!